Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. All right, you checking in with Mike Williams from the L.A. Chargers, and you're tuning in to Chargers Unleashed. Three, two, one. This is Chargers Unleashed Podcast. Here are your hosts, Dan Wolfenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to Chargers Unleashed. Dan Wolkenstein here and subbing in for Jake Hefner is friend of the show, founder of LA Football Network, Ryan Dyer. Ryan, how's it going, man? Happy New Year. What's up, man? Happy New Year. I, not quite as good looking as the great Jake, but uh, happy to be on here to talk some football with you. So thanks for having I me. I think you're easier on the eyes than both Jake and I. I'll give that to you. So don't you be um I don't know about that. Fine. Um, yeah, so uh, Ryan, we've got a huge show today. Uh, obviously, today's show is brought to you by Tick Pick, Golden Road Brewery, uh, Charger Bolt family, as well as all of the friends and family that we have at UFC Fit in Temecula. Uh, so, Ryan. Yes, sir. I know, uh, I believe you just came back from holiday vacation from hometown in Colorado. Big matchup, yep. Week 17, Chargers versus the Broncos. How are you feeling about this game? I mean, I know must win is a cliche around the NFL, but like, I don't think there is any more of a must win than this week. Yeah, I mean, I talked a lot about it on my show, previewing it, and Chargers basically went out, get some help. They can still make the playoffs. So I think after that bad loss to Houston, everyone, a lot of people kind of threw in the towel and said, well, there it is. And it was a horrible loss, but, you know, this team is still definitely vying for a playoff spot. And they get a Denver team that I'm sure we'll get into, but has a ton of guys out on COVID this week. Um, they're basically had been eliminated after losing last week, so they don't have much to play for other than spoiler. Um, so it's still a divisional game. Broncos seem to play really well against the Chargers out of all the teams in division. That seems to be the one team the Broncos tend to beat more so than the Raiders or the Chiefs. So um, it'll be a tough battle for sure, but um yeah i mean we don't have to get into this but i was just super bummed i was supposed to be there we were all going to be hanging out our wives and ah, and last minute uh we woke up today all of us sick so we will not be able to go tomorrow but i'll be i'll be watching i'll be watching from home seeing what all goes down so it's oh oh well uh yeah. you'll be there in spirit but i'm sure there'll be a ton of chargers fans i know the last game i went to uh live was the chiefs game and man that was electric mm. in terms of the atmosphere chargers fans showed up no doubt that's going to be the same for this game as well uh, we are live, so if we have folks that are joining us wherever you are, feel free to uh, reach out, comment, send us a, you know, a quick question. If you guys have any, we'll try to bring them in as we go through the episode. Uh, this will be kind of a quick one today. Um, so Chris Harry came out with a tweet the other day that basically kind of summarized like where the charges are at. You mentioned kind of like the Chargers needing some help, and basically what he had said was, and this is what is most important for Chargers right now: yep. if the Rams beat the Ravens. And the Titans beat the Dolphins, both of which I think can very easily happen. Yep. Lamar Jackson probably isn't going to be playing. And I think the Titans are better than the Dolphins. Yep. And the Chargers win. We control our destiny. We yep. being the Chargers. I mean, a lot you mentioned it, a lot of people kind of gave up a little bit or you know, went out of their sails after that Broncos loss or after that tight Texans loss. Chargers are in it, man. They're getting a lot of people healthy. You mentioned all the players that Chargers had out for COVID. Mm -hmm. Got a whole bunch of players back. We got names that we really needed. Joey Bosa, Mike Williams, Derwin James, Nazir Adderley. Uh, our kicker's now back. I think the only big name that I think is still off is Andre Roberts, which, like, yeah. funny to say that we're, hope we're hopeful that a kick returner could come back. But, um, tranquil, but not COVID related, but I think he's questionable also, which is a big one. Yes. Uh, and also uh, Jared Cook is out yeah. due to COVID. So all hands on deck. And then looking at Denver, um, they have some folks out. I believe Cortland Sutton is now scheduled or at least looks like he's going to be playing. But I believe mm -hmm. Tim Patrick is out. I think Jerry Judy is also out. Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, Bradley Chubb, 
Bryce Callahan, Caden Stearns. I mean, they're <laughs> half the rosters out there. They have, I think 19 on, on the COVID list right now as it stands. So yeah, it's, they're, they're shorthanded <laughs> as exciting or as I'm sure exciting, but as much as you'd like to think, Oh, Chargers should win this game. Like we just lost to the Texans. Yeah. <laughs> so, like there is no gimme in the NFL. And I think this last week was uh, kind of proving that. So look, we'll go through kind of a quick Broncos offense versus Chargers defense, then Chargers offense versus the Broncos defense before we kind of go into like keys to the game and bold game predictions. But looking at kind of the the Broncos offense, and I'll ask you, because I know you know this Broncos team more than most people that we have on the show. How do you see, because if, if Jake Hefner was on the show, Jake would have a very pessimistic, but also kind of a realistic <laughs> way that the Chargers would lose this game because of the Broncos offense. How do you see the Broncos offense with all that's going on stacking up against the defense of the Chargers? And more importantly, like where do you see their path to success? Yeah, well, it's it's I love watching you guys because you are very you guys bounce off each other great with Jake with the pessimism, you with the optimism, and and uh I'm usually optimistic. Well, Jake is pessimism. He'll say it's he'll he'll say I'm being a realist. Realism. Which, a real yeah. pessimist. <laughs> yeah. I'll try. So I'll try to play more of the pessimist on this show with you. Um, but yeah, the Bronco, I mean, the Broncos offense goes for their running game. That's, that's what their bread and butter is. They're 13th in rushing in the league, which um, actually is probably higher when you look at those rankings. I mean, we're now in week 17. So the, the team started off fairly slow and they've gotten a lot better. I mean, the charters know this, they ran the ball down their throats when they played them um, earlier in the season. So, uh, that's what it's going to go. You still do have those are the two of the few guys that are healthy, Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. Uh, and so that's going to go through. You get Drew Locke at quarterback this time, who, um, you know, I, I think it's he's a, a mixed bag. He's a, he's going to force the ball and uh, definitely, you know, force some deep throws, force some uh, probably not very safe throws, but he's going to bring something different than Teddy Bridgewater brought. Uh, the first time around. So it's a interesting matchup, but you're missing two key receivers in Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick. So Corlin Sutton looks like he is going to be a go. So it's going to be him, Noah Fant, and the running game is really what it's going to come down to. And uh, I think this Chargers defense just doesn't match up great with it because Broncos are going to run the football, and that's what the Chargers defense has not been good at this year, is stopping the run. Yep. It's, it's unfortunate, but I will say the one thing that people, you know, people want to poo poo the, the Broncos offense. And again, we have drew lock this week. So like everything can kind of be thrown out the window, but the one thing that I have to give them credit for is they're very, they're efficient in the sense that they just don't turn the ball over that much. Like, I think they have, I want to say their fifth best in turnovers. I think they only have like 16 on the season, which mm -hmm. is like pretty good. And then looking at like the chargers, we have like, I think, I want to say we have the fourth most turnovers, which is yeah. weird. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's been the among, among Broncos fans. That's been the the interesting debate, I think, because everyone's tired, sick and tired of Teddy Bridgewater because you know his, his nickname, Check Down Teddy, uh, and, and he just the safe play, never pushes the ball down the field. But sometimes with the defense they have, that's behooved them well because they don't turn it over in bad situations, which Drew Locke is known to do. So it might be very different on Sunday. Yeah, and and I guess to make this, we'll, we'll give a quick preview, but Chargers are second last in turnover percentage on offense with, mm. with I think it's like 18.1% of their offensive drives ended in turnover. Uh, flip that over, Broncos are seventh best in turnover percentage, just 9.2. So about wow. half the percentage half, the yeah. Chargers have. So, I mean, do you, I, I remember vividly the Drew freaking lock game last year where for three and a half quarters, <laughs> chargers are looking pretty. It's a cakewalk. Yep. And then the Drew freaking lock show happens and the whole thing goes away. Do you foresee a reoccurrence of that with a Derwin James out there and Joy Bosa given all that's on the table right now for this game? I mean, I definitely don't see a, a meltdown in the fourth quarter. That's for sure. I think Drew will make some plays just because it is different. Like I said, it's going to be, it's going to look very different than what the Chargers saw the first time around a, just a different quarterback, but B just because of the missing players. So they're just going to have to do a different game plan. The Broncos that is, but I definitely don't see with, with the Chargers getting these guys back with Brandon Staley calling the defense now, not Gus Bradley. I mean, you're not going to see a fourth quarter. What was that? What was it? It was like 21 answered in the fourth quarter. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> something, yeah, something awful like that. So, 
no, to answer your question, sure way, I do not see that happening at all. I think it'll be a a more, I mean, the big thing, and again, we'll get into it, but the big thing is just the Chargers offense needs to get going because the, the first matchup, it wasn't like the Denver's offense was like obliterating the Chargers defense. Yeah, they were able to run the football. They were able to extend drives, but they weren't like explosive. They weren't like capitalizing like tons of touchdowns. It was that they had what the Denver defense had like three turnovers and Justin Herbert could never get going. The running game can never get going. So that's what it's really going to come down to. I don't think that the chargers defense needs to worry too much about this, this Denver. O. no, no. And, and look like as weird as it is, like the chargers rush defense in terms of yards, like, isn't that bad. I think it's like, I think they rank 18th, which like I'll take, I think they have like 1800 ish yards that they've given up. Uh, and honestly, like, the Broncos, I mean, their rushing attack is good, but like when you know what's coming and they don't have any receivers, like you would think you can key in on it. And since the mm-hmm. bye, the Chargers defense, especially run defense, has looked better. Well, I think Justin key. Jones coming back, Linval Joseph being mm-hmm. there, obviously Derwin James. Like it's it's certainly not the strength, but it's not as much of a weakness as we saw the first whatever eight weeks. Oh yeah, and that, that's the key. Because I think uh, when I looked it up, I think they ranked total 29th in in rush defense, giving up 140 per game or something. Jeez. But to, but to your point, in the last eight weeks, they've jumped. I mean, if you just compound those eight games versus the previous eight games, um, it's it's much much better than that. So they have improved substantially. It was just, it was just so bad the first few weeks. I mean, there was, I think the first three weeks they were giving up almost 200 yards on the ground. So that's why they're still ranked so low, but fans need to know that they're not actually ranked that bad. Currently, it was just so bad at the beginning. They still haven't climbed out of that average per game. Um, And yeah, with Justin Jones, I think I saw that his, when he's on the field, the Chargers defense gives up like three yards per carry, as opposed to when he's off the field. So either injured or out of the play, they give up like six yards per carry. So he is, he might be the most instrumental player to this defense, not named Derwin James. That's how important I think he's been to what this defense is able to do. Now, um, we're starting off as New Year's strong. I, I just realized, and Ryan, I'll, I'll fully admit this. Um, I'm looking at, at uh, pro football reference on some of these statistics. Mm-hmm. And those statistics I gave you in terms of the 18 and 9%, mm-hmm. um, that was from 2019, not 2021. <laughs> I hit the wrong tab. Okay. So completely disregard all of that. Thank you, guys. There you go. Um, but I was like, there's no way the Chargers are 18th in rush defense. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you said uh, it, I'm like, I'll, I'll correct them later on. So yeah, there's yes, no, no, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, so switching over to the Broncos defense and Chargers yes. offense. And, and you mentioned it before. Like, I think what I, I don't want to put the Chargers defense off the hook because I think everyone who watched that game last week knows that like, the Chargers offense, like there was, they didn't do well all game, but I think when it mattered towards the end of the game, like they were, they got plays, they got touchdowns, but the defense just could not get off the field. Mm-hmm. Granted, there was a pick six at the end of the game. That's kind of in garbage time when it was kind of over already, but you cannot give up 34 points plus a pick six to the Houston Texans. Like you just yeah. can't. And, and people were getting upset you heard people talking about like getting upset for kicking field goals and stuff against the Texans. Like what happened to fourth and Staley? Like you're not expecting to have to score 34 points, 42 points against the Texans in the first, yeah. second, third quarter. So like it goes out the window. So the Chargers offense, like have they been good in every game? No. Were they good enough in the last game to win? I think they were, but the defense w- just has been a sieve. And I think that was probably mm-hmm. the most heartless game I've seen from the Chargers. And I think you heard it was Austin Eckler who talked about, like, they just didn't have any sort of leadership in the locker room the entire game. Like, there are so many yeah. guys out. And sure, you can have guys, like, coming in, step up and everything. But, like, there was just no – I'm sure people were playing hard. But there just was no grind. There was no, like, desperation. Yeah. And I think that's because there's a lot of players out there that aren't ready, that aren't in that mode. Um, well, and, and what, sorry to cut you off, but one thing too that I think people, I know fans know this, they're not dumb, but they may not think about, because even I had to like think about it too, is when players are out on the COVID list, it's not like being injured where they're still there, like on the sidelines. Like they are not, they're at home. Like they don't even travel with the team. So that that leadership in the locker room you were referring to, 
none of those guys are there. So you're, you're going from a 53 man roster or a 47, whatever on game day. And you're down to like players from the practice squad that are all up with you in the locker room. So it's just, it, I, there's no excuses to losing to a team like Texans. Um, so I'm not trying to make an excuse, but you have to unpack everything as to why it happened. And one major reason is like you were mentioning there, that lack of leadership is because those guys, even though they're not suited up, they're legit, not with the team. They're sitting at home playing PlayStation or watching the game from their couch. And I honestly, I actually kind of for, didn't even, I forgot about that. Like they can't even be on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times you'll see like, like for example, Derwin James, I believe he was out there thankfully because he was just there in case. Yeah. He like, was just out of the hammy. So, but like, I think he was probably one of the few that were able to be out there at least trying to get folks riled up. Like otherwise, like it's kind of a ghost town on the sidelines yeah. and it felt that way. And you're right. I didn't even think about that. So looking at kind of the chargers offense, I mean, look, we can talk about their offense and give statistics till we're blue in the face, but like they're top 10 in pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then flipping it over, like the Broncos defense is pretty much top 10 and everything. Um, now, granted, Von Miller is no longer there. Bradley Chubb is out. Uh, is Justin Simmons, is he in? Do you know? He should be in, yeah. But okay. Bryce Callahan's out, which is a huge piece in the secondary. I, I think you're right. Like, at the end of the day, like, this is kind of one of those all hands on deck moments where, like, we'll see what the Chargers are going to be able to do. I, I've said it all season, and this is the, probably the, the hardest part of covering this team is like you just don't know what to expect like i could the chargers go out there and beat any team in the nfl absolutely but could they also go lose to the texans apparently yeah and so <laughs> like who who are we to expect to see um like we the chart they just they just have to step up yeah like i you know people look at the offense like remember how earlier in the season i'm sure you heard this where people were talking about Chargers offense isn't clicking and there just isn't any tempo and Joe Lombardi needs to be fired and you know, all this stuff. But like their offense, I think is like the number one efficiency offense in the NFL in terms of scoring touchdowns. Like it, it's insane. Yeah. And so the offense isn't the problem. I think if you ask a lot of people to fast forward a couple of months, they'll tell you they should have all 11 or whatever it is. Draft picks focus on the defense or offensive mm-hmm. line. Um, <laughs> but do you see the offense? having issues tomorrow or or let me me rephrase if the chargers were to have issues on offense where do you think that is no jared cook michael Mm -hmm. is back like where 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 is the the keys for success on the broncos side of the ball to keep the Chargers' offense in check oh man well it's just hard with all those guys out and you have to give vic fangio credit for what he's done um, you know, most likely will not be the Broncos coach at the end of the season. Um, I think the talk out there is they'll move on just because they're not going to make the playoffs. And that was kind of the, the deal was basically make the playoffs or you're out. Ooh. But what he's done with that defense with all the injuries they've had, you know, they have like eight linebackers on injured reserve and, and they're still, they, they traded for, you know, Kenny young from the Rams mid season. Like you said, they traded away Von Miller and they're still like they're first against the pass and, and fifth overall as a defense with all these, these injuries and stuff. But now coming to this game after a big letdown loss against the Raiders and, you know, missing more key players, it's like, who's going to pass rush if they're, you know, they trade away Von Miller. You don't have Bradley Chubb. Um, you know, other guys are hurt. You're, you're missing so many key pieces. So, you know, the chargers should really have a ton of success on offense. It was, it was, I want to say surprising because of how good this, this defense has been, but it was a little bit, unnerving i would say the first matchup how poor the offense did and how they just were never able to get in a rhythm and get anything going stuck in mud. Um, yeah and i've said all year long that this offense and this is kind of a, a silly thing to say because everyone would be like well duh but it just it's more than other teams i would say this team succeeds solely based on justin herbert's performance if he is a star performance this team can beat anyone if he has an off day they're probably gonna lose and I, it, people will say, yeah, that that's common sense. But here's where you can look at it differently. The Rams last week, Matthew Stafford had three interceptions, had like 110 yards passing, and the Rams won that game because the defense played lights out. The special teams played good. Collectively as a team, they pulled their quarterback up. The Chargers aren't there yet. 
and it's not, and I know people will create on the coaching staff. It's, it's one year into this regime. They're just not there yet. So this team as it is right now, literally has a success based on Herbert's performance. So to answer your question in a, in a long roundabout way, the only thing that's going to beat this Chargers offense is not the Denver defense. It's Justin Herbert and whether he underperforms or he's able to neutralize the guys missing and go after guys. And I, I expect Keenan Allen to have a big day. I mean, Bryce Callahan is like the slot nickel corner for the, for the chart or for the Broncos. And I know Lombardi and these Chargers like to line up Allen in the slot quite a bit. And I expect him to just, you know, if Kyle Fuller is going to be on him, who's had a big letdown year, um, this should be a big game for Keenan Allen. And last thing I'll say before throwing it back to you, I said on my show last episode, and because it's just crazy to me that the kind of hate that Joe Lombardi gets, I don't get it. I said, if you look across the league, you look at all 32 teams and not just statistically, but you look at, you know, watch the game film, see the route combinations, see the play calling type. Joe Lombardi this year is a top five offensive coordinator, I think this season in 2021, not over his career, maybe not even moving forward, but based on 16 games. So, or whatever, 15 games so far, Joe Lombardi has put together a top five offensive coordinator coaching display. Justin Herbert is literally going to get people head coaching positions because of his play. Yeah. Like I, I guarantee you if, if Justin Herbert puts up these stats next year, People are going to look at Joe Lombardi like, should he be a head coach? I mean, is he an offensive juggernaut that we should bring someone in? Like, it's amazing what a good player does. Now, yeah. you brought up a point, um, and and Nathan Judy here has a question um, or has a comment. Excuse me. Uh, thanks for again. If you guys have any comments, questions, send them in. We'll go ahead and kind of react to them. Never seen anyone feedback. with the same spelling as Jerry Judy. That's ironic. Oh, maybe maybe Nathan will come in for Jerry. Yeah. Um, if we're going to go to the playoff, our backups need more reps. Hate to see DJ off the field. Okay, so. You mentioned it. Justin Herbert has to basically have an MVP game for the Chargers to have a chance in these games. And it's been evident all season. In fact, there's been MVP like performances and he's lost the game. Yep. Put you on the spot. Why is that? Why why can why can players like Tom Brady or you know, you've seen games for the Packers where Aaron Rodgers has kind of a okay game or Matthew Stafford has like a pretty not good game or, you know, look at, I don't know, Drew Locke can have games or whatever. And like all of a sudden they, these mm-hmm. teams are still winning. Yeah. Fundamentally, why is it that this team is so reliant on the success of Justin Herbert? I mean, it, it's the million dollar question. I think uh, one one easy one is just the defense isn't there yet. They just don't have the defense to rely on. And me and you have talked about this a lot. I think the defense has been a lot better this year than a lot of people have given them credit for. Um, they've had some really good games. They've played the Chiefs very well. Um, they've had other performances. They play. I mean, they played pretty good against the Cowboys, who's a juggernaut offense. But they haven't been a defense you can just like rely on. Like when you know, man, Justin just doesn't have it today. We're gonna just run the football. And if that means we're averaging 2.8 yards per play, we're punting a lot. We know we can rely on that defense to win us games. I mean, the Broncos, when they won the 2015 Super Bowl, they had like almost every single win was by a touchdown or less just because they were going from a hurt paid man to a Brock Osweiler. And they were leaning on their defense to solidify wins. And the Chargers just aren't there yet. I think they will get there. I think Brandon Staley, everyone knows who listens to me or if I've been on your show, how much I love and believe in Brandon Staley. But, and I've said this too, because a lot of people will say, well, look at what he did one year with the Rams, turn that defense into a, in a, into the top defense in the league. Why is it taking this long with a charter defense? I mean, there's, again, I'm, I'm getting on kind of off, off topic here, but no, no, no. when you look at Brandon Staley and you look at him as a coordinator, you have one job to coordinate the defense, right? Schematically put your players in the right position. He's not drafting. He's not doing free agency. He doesn't have to worry about the offense. Doesn't have to worry about play calling he doesn't worry about the special teams yeah he might go to sean McVay and say hey i'd love to get this guy in free agency or hey this is some draft picks that i'd like to go for because they fit my system that's it now he's a head coach he has to cart pen, cart cart compartmentalize if i can say it <laughs> all of those things now and run the defense so it's just it's a lot more that he has to do that he can't solely focus on just fixing the defense and so i think that's why it suffered a little bit but it doesn't mean it's not going to get right it just means it's going to take a little more time and when that happens, then they won't have to rely. There we go. Now I can bring it all back full circle. They won't have to fully rely on Justin Herbert based on wins and losses. Now we're going to get into kind of the, the nitty gritty. Um, and Seasby 
thinks you're a genius. Good point, Ryan. Um, Appreciate you. Rea reality check comes in here and says less opportunities for Herbert when the defense can't get off the field. And that is what you saw yeah. last week. And again, you saw that even the week before against Kansas City. Like it was a coin flip game yeah. and the Chargers literally couldn't get the ball at overtime ball game. Um, looking at, we had Nick Hardwick on the show earlier in the mm -hmm. season. And he said, Great. pound for pound, player for player. And Nick Hardwick knows this stuff. Player for player, the Chargers have more talent than the Rams did last year. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you on, look at on, players like... On defense this, or on the whole team? On defense, specifically. Okay. And you look at players like Nazir Adderley, Asante Samuel Jr., Derwin. I mean, we all know the team. Um, yeah. We've said it for, for years that the Chargers, if you take their A squad... I would put their A squad against any other team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But like most teams, your A squad is going to be healthy all year. B squads, I'll still kind of take. They get to the C, D squad, like our team just is not good. Evident last week against the Texans. Like no, no their, C, their C players are better than our C players. I would have thought that a Brandon Staley type team would be coached up better than we saw last week. And again, I, I get Cove, I get, you know, any given Sunday, I get all that stuff. But I would have thought that Staley would have brought up the depth more. Is that showcasing how much lack of depth the Chargers have on defense? Or is that more just like, at the end of the day, you can only do so much when you're down to like your fourth safety and you're out your second and third, first and second corner, and you're out your starting linebackers and your defensive line, like, other teams, like for example, like the Broncos, like their team has been decimated and yeah. they have one less win than the Chargers. By all means, like the Chargers off the Chargers team has been healthy this year. Yeah. Like how is like how is that possible? Yeah, it's it's a great question. It's it's a frustrating one because to be fair, and uh, you know, I'm a very optimist about this coaching staff, but to be fair, that's a that's a true criticism. Like, how are they not better coached up? past the stars of this team um and it's one that you know how do we answer that and i just think it's one of those we'll see more in year two of this this team um because they are defensively let me just say this defensively wise and again i, I compare to the Rams just because it's easy because that's where brandon staley came from and for so, folks who don't know ryan is probably one who knows more about brandon staley than almost anyone who covers brandon staley he was with him with the rams and ryan has covered the rams since he's been there so if there's one person who knows about Brandon Staley and what he could bring, it's Ryan. So what was yours? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we'll see if that stays true for much longer. But um, when he went to the Rams, he took over for Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips was the D coordinator at the Rams, ran a three four defense. Um, everyone knows Wade Phillips. He'll probably be a Hall of Famer as he should be. Great defensive mind. He comes in. He also implements a three four base with you know a different the two hybrid safety um, uh, scheme. Everyone knows it now that is Chargers fans because they've seen what this defense is. But he comes into the Rams and it's like, okay, it's it, it's not changing a whole lot. It's a different thing schematically, but it's still a 3-4 base. Now he comes to the Chargers and you're going from a Gus Bradley cover three system to Literally a... Literally never blitz. Ba yeah, never blitz to a base 3-4, you know, two high safeties. Like, it, you're completely changing things. Joey Bose is going from an end hand of the dirt to like a stand-up 3-4 linebacker in a sense. So it's a lot of that, A, is you're changing things from players that they're used to doing, the players that were here, and B, it's just mentally. Like, these guys have to learn so much, and, you know, that, that could be a criticism in itself. People are like, well, why not just teach them what they already know? Why are you trying to change everything up? And I think it's because, you know, you know it works. <laughs> like, you know this Vic Fangio-style defense works. Um, Gus Bradley's defense worked, like, with ED. It hasn't worked in a long time. It did work when he was back in Seattle, but that defense seems to have been exposed a lot more nowadays where this Vic Fangio defense, as we're going to see when they play Denver, and we've talked about all these injuries, they're still a top five unit. So Staley coming from that tree, coming from that mindset, knows it'll work. It might just take time to get implemented. So is it a depth issue or is it just guys just taking a long time to really develop into the system? The other thing I, I say, Dan, and again, I'm not trying to make excuses because losing the Texans is inexcusable. It was just a bad coach game. The coaching staff coach bad. The players play bad. But when you just try to, yeah, but just trying to appeal it more and give some explanations to it. Also, um, where was I going with this? No, I, I, I'm just talking myself in circles, I think. Um, 
<laughs> but I will say, as, well, let me get, like, I'll let you get your thoughts for a sec. Thank you. We had Kenneth had Murray. Point. We had we had Kenneth Murray uh, on the show, and I know he's had a down year. If everyone can call that out. Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh yeah, Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. But one of the things he mentioned that I thought was interesting was in the Brandon Staley scheme, he mentioned that now, this year, the coaching staff will have literally like three different defensive plays called at once, depending on what the offensive line lineup is. So when they play, so when the offensive, when the offense on the other side lines up, the Chargers have three plays they have to go on defense. And then depending on where they line up, the whoever has the green dot will go ahead yep. and call which one it is. And then boom, they have to go like immediately. So every player on the defense has to know three plays at a time. So, I mean, I mean, it's not easy. I'm not giving excuses. Like it's obviously hard, but like yeah. to your point, there's a lot of like come up from this. You can't just like bam, pick it up. Yeah. And, 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 then- and Craig Smith last with, I'll, I'll give you your floor here. Said Craig Smith yeah, yeah. comes in and to your point, he kind of agrees with you. Craig shout out, by the way, thanks for listening in. Uh, Staley will have the defense humming over the next two years. He basically has to repair everything Telesco neglected depth wise, which shots fired. We'll talk about the depth wise in a second, but Brian, did you remember your point? Yeah, I'll just be quick with it. But the only thing I was going to say is, you know, knock on wood, this Chargers team hasn't had that like significant injury, like a Derwin James out for the year or whatever, but they still have had many, many injuries. Like it seems like every game they don't have their starting 11 on defense, like not a single game. I think uh, I can't remember if it was Popper that tweeted out or someone did the di- the how many different like 67 secondary different- combinations they've had. <laughs> um, and so that too, that's a big deal because you have different guys playing different positions at different times alongside different guys and everyone does something a little differently. You just can never get in that full rhythm. Like literally Derwin James and Nasir Adelaide had played what, two games together on the back end? Like one of them is has been out every time in the in the – Mike Davis has been out a bunch. Asante Samuel, uh, Asante wow. Samuel Jr. So you have all these guys filling in at different times and they haven't had the big injury, but you still every game don't have your true starting guys. So everyone will blame depth and say, man, they've done such a poor job coaching and building this depth. But in reality, you can only coach who's available. And if they're not available week to week, like every time someone's getting comfortable, then they're out for two weeks. Then that just throws the whole rhythm and the balance off. And I think that's a big thing too that has played this defense. Yeah. So HH4, not quite sure what that stands for. Weren't you guys the ones saying the Chargers didn't need secondary help? I'm assuming he's referring to Jake and myself, an abysmal unit. <laughs> now, um, I can give all kinds of excuses. If the Chargers have Mike Davis, Nazir Adderley, Asante Samuel Jr., and Derwin James, and Chris Harris, if they have those five guys out there, I like our guys. I like our chances. Mm-hmm. I don't think they need more help than that as, as a starting five in the secondary. Now, have they had that all season? Like, like you said, arguably no. Could they get more secondary help? I.e., like a Mark Webb, who they got hasn't been able to play all season, seemingly, which is horrible. Uh, yeah. Who have they been able to have Alohi Gilman out there for many times? You've seen um, Keeman Hall has been hurt. Tavon Campbell has not been playing well. Like the depth part. And maybe that's a miss on my side. Like, do I think the starters need help? No, but could the depth use, could we use five more corners? Absolutely. Like I'll take that now. Uh, yeah. So sure. The chargers need more depth to the question we saw earlier. Where do you see the chargers kind of like, where is their weak point depth wise on defense? Like obviously I mean, secondary has been, crushed by by issues all year yeah. but like they've also had like so many injuries that like you can't you can only have so many guys on a 53 man roster like what are you gonna do when you're down four guys at one in one game yeah well and and just last thing on the depth thing too and i i just think it's it's hard and, and a lot of people don't you need to think big picture and look at the whole nfl like like, how can you be like, you No, you can't have a starting quality corner as your, your corner four. you just, <laughs> a, you can't afford it. I know the Chargers will say, well, we have 55 million cap space, but that's not how the NFL works where you have like f- your fourth and fifth are starting quality corner. There's going to be a drop off. 
Watch You're the Vikings hoping. game when you see Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen on Tavon Campbell. They find yeah. the number four guy and they just go after him all game. And that's with any team. Like, find me a team. We'll talk specific playoff team. Find me a playoff team out there right now that is like, man, they're, they're missing their top two or three secondary guys, but they're so good at depth that their fourth and fifth guys are just still Pro Bowl candidates. It, it doesn't happen. It's because those teams stay healthy. They have their starting guys in the secondary. Uh, you know, Green Bay who's the top team in the NFC right now, like their secondary, like Jair Alexander is one of the best. He's been a little banged up and their secondary has dramatically gotten a little worse because of that. I mean, it's just, that's the way it works. Unfortunately, I know people want to say, man, look at this depth, but it really just comes down to your, your top guys need to be healthy, need to be out there. Now there's other ways you can mask that obviously and, and improve that coaching wise and change schematically a little bit and try to do different looks where you're not having Tavon Campbell on Justin, Jeff on Justin Jefferson. <laughs> there's certain things you can potentially do, but when you're down, were they down, what, three guys? They were down, was Derwin out that game too? I'm trying to think back. I know they were out both Mike Davis and Asante. I think Derwin Samuel. left that game in the second Derwin, half. So they were down their top three secondary I guys. Think. Like At that point, you're just like, it's the NFL. Like, yeah, Asante, has- Asante was out, and so was Tavon Campbell. Or so was, um, I, I want to say Derwin was also out, and I want to say Nazir Adderley may have been out too. I don't, I don't remember, to be honest. I don't want to say anything wrong. Yeah, um, but it comes to a point where you got to look like the other team has ballers too, and we can't have star players as our fourth or fifth depth pieces. So yes, the depth is an issue. Yes. There's things they can do to answer your question. I guess what's the biggest weakness. You know, it's hard because obviously the rush defense is still ranked worse, but I think they have decent depth there with some of the guys that have come up, uh, but it is a significant drop off from Justin Jones and Linval Jovis. I think that drop off is seems to be bigger. Everyone points the secondary, but the drop off from Justin Jones and Linval Joseph to the next guys, I think, is bigger in my opinion. Yeah, I think the stats—I forget what it was—but the stats for yards per play, yards per rush when Justin Jones is in versus out, I think it's like two yards worse. It's like yeah. five point six with or something like that. I think I saw a Daniel Popper tweet five point something with Justin Jones out, three point something with Justin Jones in. I mean, he's yeah, he's that big. Uh, okay, last call for questions and comments regarding this week, uh, this tomorrow, actually, game versus the Broncos. Yeah. We have some comments here. Ryan, let's go ahead and kind of get some quick comments before we get to our keys to the game and predictions. Um, quick question. We could do this hot, hot, rapid fire. Do you think there will be any change to the coaching staff on defense this offseason, depending how we look to finish the season? I have a hot take slash question, but I'll let you go first. I don't, I don't see it now. I see no changes whatsoever. If Vic Fangio is let go, mm. could you see him being brought in? No, 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 no slight to Ronaldo Hill, but could you no. see him being brought in? The only way it happens, I think I saw someone else pose that before too on Twitter. Um, and obviously that'd be amazing. But the only way that happens is if Brandon Staley doesn't want to call plays on defense. Because Vic Fangio is not coming to just hold a clipboard and have the DC moniker. Vic Fangio is running a defense in his next job. And so if, if Brandon Slater says, you know what, I'd rather just, you know, facilitate and be head coach and kind of be able to have my nose at on both sides of the ball, then I could, yeah, maybe that would happen. Um, they're good friends. Obviously, they they go back. That's where Brandon Slater got his shot. That was his like who he looked up to in coaching. So it makes a lot of sense schematically. It'd be zero change whatsoever. But it would have to be Staley saying, I don't want to like the defense is now yours and I'll just be head coach, which I don't see that happening. I think Vic will be a DC for an offensive minded head coach just because that basically he'll run the defense head coach runs the offense, but um, certainly it would be interesting. But yeah, I, I personally don't see it happening. I would, I would love it. You're probably right. I don't see, I don't see Brandon Staley relinquishing everything, but like amazing to have both of those guys on the same team. I, yeah. I, think, I mean, we saw what happened last time. Like it would be, it would be sweet. Um, yes. HH- you, very, you, you very sorry. Just the last thing. You very rarely see a defensive-minded head coach get fired and then go and become a DC for another defensive-minded head coach. They always go to then an offensive-minded head coach. That's just kind of how it works. Interesting. Okay. Kind of think, well, well, we yeah. shall see. Um, HH four does not like this defense. Thinks it's horrid. Look, <laughs> the Chargers' defense has not been playing well this season. Yeah. But it, it's it's kind of like they they play off kilter it seems all the time or everyone's out on covid like their rush defense would be great and they get burned because tavon campbell's on them their pass defense is fantastic they get burned for 250 yards rushing they you know they they blow it on fourth downs every now and then. like it it's been kind of weird but like 
in short, no excuses. Like the defense hasn't been that great. Like I think their statistics are a little bit worse than they actually are sometimes other than a few games like that. Take the Texans game out for a sec. Brandon Staley, we, everyone talks about like the chargers we will go to the secondary here in a bit, but everyone talks about Brandon Staley and like our rush defense and our rush defense. Isn't that great. We're giving up. We're getting gash. If you know, Brandon Staley's defense, I think he calls like the one and a half gap technique, mm -hmm. or basically he wants folks to be able to take up one and a half gaps. And essentially what that allows for folks to do is be able to get short yardage, i.e. one to three yards a carry, but it should be able to keep it at those short chunks where they end up having to not be able to get like those huge plays and keeping mm -hmm. everything in front of you and therefore causing teams to have to pass on third down. Justin Jones has been out there for a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And so that goes from three yards to, as we said, five point something not working. Now, could that be a depth issue? Absolutely. But still, that stuff takes time. Um, yeah. At the, at the end of the day, defensive line needs to step up. Secondary needs to step up. But again, they've been out. Like, it's hard to... I think the part... I'm just going to be honest. I'll be completely transparent. The thing that has been most frustrating covering and watching this team is... And I mentioned this to Jake, I think, offline. For how much talent the Chargers have and for how good this team is and for... You know, Justin Herbert, Brandon Staley, Derwin James, Joey Bosa, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. You are one game. You are tied with the Raiders. Yeah. Like the Raiders, like the Dolphins have the same record as you. You're one game ahead of like a team who doesn't have a quarterback, i.e. the Broncos. Like mm -hmm. you, you, how, like how is this team one game or the same as some of the other teams, which I would take ours every day of the week. Mm -hmm. Like, is that like, I don't know the answer, but I think that's probably what's frustrating to a lot of people is like, how is this possible? Like there's always some different way the charges can mess something up. This is a new team, yeah. but I don't know if it's just parody this year, which I think it is part of that. Um, COVID has certainly messed things up, but it's just been a strange, a strange year. Um, Okay, so it's, yeah, Dan, it's it is it's frustrating because it's the it's the inconsistency. Some weeks it's like, holy cow, this is a Super Bowl contending team, and some weeks it's like, well, this is the old Chargers, this is the Anthony Lynn Chargers. So it doesn't make any sense. And the la the thing I'll say though, for fans out there, I know it's hard to look at this because of I think the loss to the Texans was so bad that people just said, here we go again. This is the same old team. <laughs> but still, if they went out, beat the Broncos, and finished season against the Raiders, and this team goes ten and seven on the year regardless if they make the playoffs or not, any fan out there, I don't want anyone making excuses now. If you would have came back in July or August and said, oh yeah, you guys are going to go 10 and seven in Staley's first year as head coach, everyone would have been like, that's great. That's a great first year for the head coach. So I know it's been a roller coaster and frustrating, but you look at the overall picture and what they're building, there's a lot of good things that, you know, we, that we're, we're not making excuses, everyone out there listening, but you got to look at the positive of it and try to spin it in a way that, okay, let's look at some good and then we can be critical of the best. You know what I'm going to do, Ryan? I'm going to switch us for a sec because you just became Chargers Homer with that positive, positive ah. optimistic outlook here. This is incredible. Yeah. I like this. Um, <laughs> look, I, I would say 10 and 7 is good. I, and I've said from the beginning of the season, I thought, I think 10 and 7 gets in. I really do. The, you're yeah. right. I thought going into last week, Chargers had to win two of three. Certainly didn't think that it would have to be <laughs> the last two. Yeah. But, um, one thing I will not allow, anointing Staley as a defensive genius was premature. Mm. Incorrect. I apologize if that is incorrect. Yeah. Um, he is a defensive genius. You can ask anyone who has played for him or who has coached with him. He is that guy. I know you're in your feelings, but like pump the brakes a bit. To everyone's point, like there are some issues, there are some timing things, got to get folks up. This is his first year as a head coach, got a lot of things to figure out. He's gonna, he's gonna have a whole set of draft picks, which I'm actually super excited to see what he ends up doing there. Whole offseason with a crap load of cap space. Like it's a it's one year, and right now the guy's already won eight games. So chill. Okay, and again, looking at looking at what he did with the Rams. I'm sorry, I keep comparing it. It's just no, no. It's an easy comparison. The Rams defense last year was 
pretty much completely healthy the entire year. Like their defensive line, Michael Brockers, Morgan Fox, Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd on the edge, Jalen Ramsey, Darius Williams, Troy Hill, John Johnson on the back end. Like none of those guys miss time. None of them. That is so key. And I know people think like you can't use injuries as an excuse. It's not an excuse. It's a reality. The good teams stay healthy. And the Chargers on defense have been banged up all year, have the most combinations in the secondary of any team in the NFL. So yes, Brandon Staley is a defensive genius. It hasn't worked sometimes. And they've also just haven't had the, the correct pieces out there every Sunday. And again, first year head coach, literally brand new everything. So like, let's pump the brakes a little bit here yeah. on terms of expectations. All right. And they're the 22nd rate defense, not 31st. No. <laughs> 31st in points, I think, but overall. Yes, which again, he gave up 41 points, like not to give him more credibility in his argument, but 34 yeah. points to the Texans. And again, like bad, bad. that in a, in a vacuum is showcasing, I think the issues we have with depth because it's really like third string against third string in a lot of positions and you just got beat. Um, yeah. Okay. Keys to the game. Before we get to our bowling game predictions, we've got a little long here. I apologize. Thanks for hanging in with us. Again, for folks who are tuning in, uh, Jake ha- is out today. So Ryan has been gracious enough to fill in with his Broncos slash Brandon Staley expertise. Uh, leading the ship here for LAFB. Keys to the game, Ryan. Broncos win if they do, if, if blank. Broncos win if blank. <laughs> I don't really see them winning, but uh, if if Drew Locke goes and balls out, then this team could win. Because, uh, like I said earlier in the show, the key to this offense is going to be the run game. That's like what they're going to be have to stick to is to get Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, Gordon going. And the Chargers probably know that. But if Drew Locke randomly goes out and throws for three fifty and three touchdowns and no interceptions, so the key to the Broncos winning is if Drew Locke balls out and has no turnovers, which isn't see, likely either. <laughs> you know what's what's kind of interesting is. Jake Jake has mentioned this a few times. Seemingly, any team the Chargers play, the quarterback could have a crap game and still win. Like I forget who it was, but was it was it Teddy Bridgewater who, who threw like fifteen passes and they beat us or something crazy? Um, uh, yeah, I like can remember it wasn't a lot. Quarterbacks don't really have to do anything. Like even like that game, it, that Minnesota game. Like I think he threw for a buck 70 if i remember right and like there really wasn't anything going on but every time he threw it it was a devon campbell seemingly and like for me the key to this game if the chargers can keep the broncos under 120 yards rushing combined mm-hmm. i think they win i just i don't see drew Locke beating you for four quarters now if you let him stick around and you give them, you know, a one possession game with five minutes left, that scares the crap out of me. Because, like, to your point, I don't trust this defense to stop anyone. Yeah. It just, you, you, what have they shown anyone to think that? Um, in an offense, keys of the game, if the Chargers can just score, they got to score touchdowns. <laughs> like, if, if they can score, it if helps. they can put up 28 points, the game's over. There's no way the Broncos, and I said this against the Texans and they got burned, but like, <laughs> The Broncos, their offense is not good. No. It's just not. And sure, the Chargers defense also is not good, but they're getting a lot of guys back. So I personally think it has to do with scoring touchdowns, which I know is kind of an obvious thing. But I think more importantly, they got to just like contain the rush, the rushing attack on the Broncos. So they can contain that. And not let that become like the Browns game where we're getting gashed for like 300 yards. Yeah. (laughs) I I think there's a way. Thunderbolts 24. Ryan would like, he says, Ryan, let us win. Ryan, can we please win? Yeah, let's do it. We got the (laughs) thumbs up approval from Ryan. There we go. Let's do Uh, it. Reality check. Keys of the game. Reality check says, stop the run and get up early. Also, don't turn the ball over or we should be able to take care of business. I agree. Like if we, you know, a little cliche, don't beat yourself. I think yeah. charges have it if they don't beat themselves. Um, yes, C's B Keeble, sink <laughs> wow, couldn't talk. Campbell single handedly has lost us two or three games. 
I don't want to blame Tavon Campbell because, again, he's not CB1. He's CB, what, four or five? And he's being picked on. Like, that's just the reality. Um, yes, Manny, as a Chargers fan, the defense worries all of us. But to your point, bolt up. And Marlon, we said this earlier in the show, nothing would surprise any of us with this team. It has been roller coaster <laughs> the entire time. Yep. HH4 with his quote unquote optimism. <laughs> Chargers are done. I see I'm giving up 35 points, 12 straight game, giving up 21 points. A defensive genius is far fetched. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that that is going to be snapped this game. Uh, yes, Nathan, seven, oops, not that one. 17 years of this. I'm telling you, this is a different time. <laughs> this is a different time. Change we is on the horizon. This. Change is coming for this. Team. Yes. Yes. Worry. All right. Finally, Ryan, moment of truth, bold and game predictions. As many bold predictions as you'd like, and then give us a final score prediction. Bold prediction, huh? I mean, it's, I think too, we, we're still waiting to hear about that linebacker position. If Kenneth Murray is going to play in the middle, um, which he's been playing on the edge. It's kind of like, that's another been interesting call by this defensive staff is where they've kind of moved him around. Cause he hasn't seemed to really fit anywhere that they've moved him particularly well. Um, Steve Haglin, real quick, Steve Haglin, friend of the show, LAFB writer, um, also part of guilty as charged podcast. He, I saw a tweet that he had, which I was actually kind of like, yeah, that's kind of true. Like, Oh, someone who's struggling, let's make him switch positions constantly all year. Cause that's yeah. going to make it better. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely been some things this coaching staff has done. That's been a little bit head scratching. Um, overall, I love the unit. Like I've said many times on this show, but, uh, yeah, that's one of those. So, um, but bold prediction, I'm going to go with Kenneth Murray gets a turnover in this game, whether it be a pick playing from the inside or a forced Melvin Gordon fumble, as he loves to do in the mm. NFL. I think <laughs> Kenneth Murray gets a turn turnover in this game. So that's my, that's my bold prediction steps up big when they need him. Whew. Okay. Bold prediction. Uh, three interceptions by this Chargers defense. I think Nazir Adderley gets his first interception this year. He's had, he, he's had his hands on the many. Yeah, of he's them. been close. Um, and even pretty acrobatic, but I'm gonna say three interceptions. Wait, three interceptions by the defense you said? Yep, three interceptions. Okay. Sorry, three. Let me rephrase. Three turnovers. Three okay. turnovers. Um, I believe Mike Williams needs a handful, like fifty yards or so, to get over a thousand for the season. So he could have. He could be the first. I think the first wide receiver two to get a thousand yards. Mm -hmm. So a uh, big day for Steven Anderson, by the way. Yeah. Uh, him and Trey McKitty, Jared Cook's out. Final Aaron's score. Been great this year, by the way. Yes, he has. True. Okay. Final score. Ryan, the floor is yours. Final score. Who wins? I got the Chargers winning. Um, final score. Man, it's 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 just tough because this matchup. I, the Chargers are the better team right now. They have the better quarterback. They're fighting for their playoff lives, but the matchup just doesn't bode well for them. That's why the Denver. Broncos have always played well against them because the Broncos have a great defense. Chargers have a good offense or a great offense. Broncos have a poor D uh, offense and the Chargers have a poor defense. <laughs> so you, one of those is going to have to like, something's got to give, right? So who's going to be the, the crack that, that opens up. Is it the offense, the defense? Um, but I do think the Chargers get it done after that bad loss the first time. So I'll go uh 27, 20 uh, Chargers win. I think Keenan Allen has a big day. Last question for you, Dan. Has has Chris Harris Jr. played against the Broncos yet since he's been on the Chargers? I feel like every time they play, he's out. Good this question. Be, I know he didn't he didn't get to play. Time. He didn't play them last year. Yeah, this would be I his don't fourth remember chance. if he was I think he was there. No, I think he was there in this game because I think that was when he was mic'd up, I believe. In the first matchup. In the first matchup this year, this year okay. I think. But he's out he's out again this week, isn't he? I think he's actually back. Is he back already? Maybe I he's, think he's back. I okay. think he, I think that came out today. I think he's back. Yeah. Uh, he changed the five day COVID list. I think you're right. Nathan Judy with the bold prediction eyes on Trey McKitty four catches, 65 yards and a touchdown and has the chargers winning 24 17. Okay. All right, guys. I like gals, it. This is a, uh, this is a put up or shut up game. 
and a lot can happen for many players and honestly, potentially some of the coaching staff on this team, barring how this game goes. Eight and eight, nine and seven are completely different, obviously. They got to find a way to get this win, and I think the Chargers do. I know I'm the optimist. Last week was a bad loss. I don't think that they lose three games in a row. I think this team is pissed off. Uh, the starters, especially after what happened last year, last week, excuse me. I'm going to go 30 to 24. And that 24 is garbage time. I think they're going to get like another touchdown. It'll be like 30 to 17. And then it comes back. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So we both have the Broncos mm-hmm. losing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chargers. Do they make the playoffs? What do you think? Yeah. Yes. So they're gonna. You think they're gonna go ten and seven? They go ten and seven, and I think the Rams are gonna beat the Ravens tomorrow. So that's one of the dominoes they need to happen. Um, and even if the if the Titans don't beat the Dolphins, the Dolphins finish the year against the Patriots. They got two tough games to win out for them. So I think they'll lose one of their two, and then that'll put the Chargers in. So yeah, the Chargers win out and make it in. All right. Uh, let's see. P- pessimism comes in Denver 41 chargers 20, according to HH four Andre I Roberts. Think, I don't think the Broncos have scored over like 27 points all year. So that'll be impressive if they put up famous last words, Ryan Gase gasser wants to see Andre Roberts take one to the house before the season ends. He was so close against the chiefs and then only to lose on four downs. Uh, looks like we got someone necro surge is going to be at the game for the first ah, time. Enjoy it. So far is beautiful. Yes, and for folks who have not gone to a Chargers game, what are you doing with your life? That stadium, and honestly, like it was such a glow-up moment for me being at that Chiefs game and seeing how many fans were at that stadium. It was unreal. I loved it. Yeah. Go to the game. I, I think tickets. there's still tickets. I have two tickets I need to sell, so anyone after listening needs to go. If Hit anyone needs two tickets <laughs> for the Chargers versus Broncos game tomorrow... tomorrow. Ryan Dirud LAFB on Twitter. Check him out. Go yeah. to his DMs and see DM. if you can go get them from him. Um, last if not, we have a like, good. If not, we have a good ticket provider you can go to also. Yes, uh, great. <laughs> Look at this segue. No. Uh, for folks who have not been to TickPick, uh, if you're looking for cheap tickets without all the fees that you're used to seeing from the folks, like I'm not going to mention any names. Go to TickPick.com slash Unleashed. You can get arguably the best prices, if not the best prices, for sporting events, not just the Chargers, no fees. with zero fees, and get yourself to some fun, interactive games. I know COVID has been crazy. Mask up for those who are vaccinated, for those who have health concerns. I get all of that stuff, but be careful, be safe, but you can still have fun. Go to TickPick.com slash Unleashed and get to an event and go to a chargers game man i don't know what people are doing uh this year's last home game of the year i it's gonna be fun this is gonna be fun all right guys again ryan thank you so much for joining us folks jake has not been able to come in today ryan is doing an amazing impression of the pessimistic and the optimistic on both sides so i i commend you for that um you can find us at chargers unleashed again ryan dyrud at ryan dyrud lafb myself at chargers homer Ryan, any last things you want to tell the good people before we log off? No, it's been, uh, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you all that have uh, been watching the show and have watched or uh, read anything at the LA Football Network. Uh, we've got a big 2022 coming. So happy new year to all. Thanks for riding with us and and can't wait to uh, unfold our plans mm. uh, for the next year because uh, it's, it's some fun stuff. So thanks, Dan, for having me on. <laughs> Look at that tease, of course. All right, that's going to wrap things up. Again, Ryan Dyrud at Ryan Dyrud LAFB, myself at Chargers Homer. You can find us at Chargers Unleashed on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, as well as YouTube. Subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Happy New Year to everyone. Stay safe. Good luck real to quick, everyone. Real quick before you hit, game. real quick before you hit in broadcast, I just saw last comment from our guy, HH4, about Broncos putting up 28. Uh, uh, on Staley's defense, one of those was a pick six, so it was actually only twenty-one points. So, boom, Pastor, Pastor Tan had a pick six that game. So, knowledge, yes. I, I, I also but I get your point. I get your frustration, bro. I get it. Yes, for sure. By by the Things way, need to get, improve. Yeah, and and in HH four, great show. I'll be back to troll you next week. Can't wait. <laughs> HH four, come back in. I can't wait to see you.
Thank guys, thank you so much. Go Chargers! They need this win. We need this so bad. And Jake and I will be with you guys to go through all of the recap as we get through. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're the Thanks, best. Brother. We'll see you soon, man. Thanks, brother. Have fun. All right, guys. Peace. Go Chargers bolt up. We'll talk to you guys soon. Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim.